D.C.'s favorite senior lifestyle magazine comes to life. Join us as Senior Living goes on location to bring you the inspiring, informative, and entertaining adventure-filled stories of seniors in your community. Senior Living on Location. Changing the definition of aging. Celebrating seniors living life to its fullest. Stay with Senior Living on Location as we meet four unique sets of senior entrepreneurs who've turned their passions for photography, painting, and storytelling, as well as lavender and wine, into profit-making retirement adventures. Three's company is alive and well at the Damali Lavender Farm and B&B in Cowichan Valley, B.C. The farm is owned by three young senior partners, Dave and Marcia Stanley, plus Allison Philp. During a soul-searching trip, the Stanleys were looking for a total lifestyle change. They weren't sure what they wanted, but they were looking for something they could enjoy doing together as they got older. They were captivated during their travels by the quaint towns, rural villages, and lavender farms they crossed on their journey. I was at the crossroads in my work, and our kids had left home, so Marcia and I decided to go on a trip and just sort of, what are we going to do for the rest of our lives? went down to Squim, Washington and saw some lavender farms and essentially I said, well, we can do that. And then from there, we looked across the water and saw Victoria and went, we already knew we were going to come home to the island. That was time to come home to the island. So we looked across and said, if they can grow lavender here, we can grow lavender on the Vancouver Island. So let's go back to the Vancouver Island and have a look at property and see what we can do. And then we started talking to, my, my sister told Allison that we were looking at coming back to the island and Allison was excited, so offered to come looking at property with us. And she also knew somebody who grew lavender in a much smaller way, but basically said, let me introduce you to this person who grows lavender yeah. and let's go from there and talk about it. And, and over the course of a few weekends of looking at property, the idea of coming together as a partnership grew Just, and yeah and uh, took roots and here we are. Well, I'd been working in the tourism industry for some time and, and was interested in agritourism already and had been involved in previous lavender festivals and knew people in the lavender industry and in the wine industry. And, and when it came time for Marsha and Dave to go looking at properties, there was the opportunity to introduce them to some of the people I knew and, and help to form, form, formulate the vision. Chevy, in, uh, in. While there's not a huge amount of data on Canada's senior entrepreneurs, figures released by the School of Business from the University of Western Ontario gives data from the UK and the States, showing that those over 65 who are still working, about a third of them are self-employed. In fact, according to a Small Business 2010 CIBC report, in the past 15 years there has been a 50% increase in the number of self-employed women in Canada. There are now approximately 800,000 women business owners in Canada, and the number of female-owned businesses is growing 60% faster than those run by men. Each of the owners of this lavender farm has their own special niche. I'm the finance person. I'm, I'm a chartered accountant and a partner to local accounting firm, MNP. And um, so I do all the financing, the business plans, that kind of thing. And Dave is... Mule. <laughs> Dave can build anything, can build anything and he can he makes he makes the the stuff on the ground come to life. I'm also the vintner in the winery. And, and the uh, essential so. oil distiller. Yeah. Yeah, the essential oil. And then Allison oil is the marketing coordinator and and this last year and a half or two years has been in charge of of uh, managing our workforce and and kind of coordinating all of that and so we all we all have our our, our areas. We all work on the farm. The Damali Farm is part of WWOOF, the Worldwide Opportunities on Farms, which is a volunteer travel farming program. It's hosted well over 200 woofers so far. There are chickens, geese, sheep and pigs at the farm, as well as an inspirational Damali labyrinth. The farm is also host to a number of annual events and fundraising activities. But its mainstay is lavender, and the farm boasts an incredible number of different types of lavendula. Well, we have 25 different varieties of lavender here at the farm, and we grow different types for different purposes. You can do a self-guided tour around the farm with a little map, a signage on the different varieties, and you're welcome to pull some off and smell them. They all smell and look quite different. 
And next to the lavender fields is a romantic little cottage called the Lavender Shop, featuring just about everything you can imagine rubbing on your body, from lavender lotions and oils and creams, to enticing your taste buds with a delectable assortment of lavender jellies, jams and syrups, and even lavender vinegars. We have about 80 different products now, and it's just been kind of an evolution of people saying, oh, do you have this or that? And us saying, we don't, but we could. And so we just go down that road and, uh, you know, we've done a lot of reading and Googling and, and learning about this stuff ourselves. We make all of our products here at the farm. And that includes the wine, of course, an extraordinary blend of berries and lavender. It wasn't always the case, though. Dave Stanley already had a great recipe for his classic white and reds, but it didn't stop there. The ladies in this great business wanted lavender incorporated into everything, including Dave's wine. Allison and my, my wife, Marsha, um, they told me we got to do it. And so uh, initially they took me kicking and screaming down to put lavender in my nice wine. And uh, it actually turned out quite well. Lavender has been used in everything from making perfumes, oils, soaps, and scented sachets to entice the senses to its long history of healing properties. Some of the medicinal benefits include tucking a lavender-filled pouch under your pillow to restore restful sleep, to helping heal problems from the neck up. It's also apparently the plant of choice as it raises the spirits and dispels flatulence. Talk about an interesting couple of medicinal actions. And speaking of interesting actions, it's interesting to note how the name of this great farm venture came about. It was discussed for quite some time over, well, let's just say coffee. And finally, the aha moment. Dave always says, I'm the da of the Molly. I'm and the I'm da. the ma. <laughs> and Alice and I share I'm the, the A. Of the Molly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The name Damali, even though inspired from a combination of the letters of the partner's names, also means beautiful vision in Arabic. The Damali Lavender Farm and Bed and Breakfast is a great and inspirational example of three young seniors that have the vision and passion to take a giant leap of faith, to change their location, their careers, and their lifestyles to follow their dreams. Managing the Damali farm is something they all wish to be able to do as they age and retire, whether as lifestyle, a hobby, or an investment. If following your dream in your golden years is something you'd like to pursue, senior-aged entrepreneurs in Canada may be eligible for small business grants. Your age may even be considered as part of your eligibility. But other factors, such as the circumstances surrounding your small business, will also play their part. Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media, celebrating seniors in our community. Well, I've been painting since I was a little baby. Uh, little baby. <laughs> well, maybe not quite that early a start, but Angela Ahempel has been doing what she loves for a very long time. This 57-year-old has made a full-time career from something she took pleasure in doing as a child. Angela is an impressionist painter and enjoys working with watercolors, oils, and acrylics. Angela immigrated to Canada in 1973 from Hong Kong. She went to high school in Edmonton where there was only one other Chinese student in her school. Angela sought refuge in her art. When I was 12, my mom recognized that I have some talent, so she sent me to teach her. That her new... Since then, I just, I just love painting, and I always know that I, I'm going to be an artist. I want to be an artist. All I want to do is paint and draw and uh, so I went to uh, art college when I was when I finished high school. I graduated in 1980 and uh, I worked as a uh, graphic designer for over 10 years and after I have a couple of uh, kids and I started to paint at home and since then I just keep painting and, and keep painting. Since deciding to take up her art full-time, Angela's career blossomed. She's won a slew of awards, including her recent prize of gold for her painting titled Christchurch Oxford at the prestigious Spilbury Medal Show at the Federation of Canadian Artists. Angela was one of only three artists from the West Coast to win a medal. 
This painting is a, a is a, a image from from a church in Oxford, England, uh, called Christ Christ Church Cathedral. And most time, most of the time, when people uh, paint a church, they have the center facing in. But this painting, the image is facing out of uh, these two figure coming in to the church or going out of the church because. A lot of people couldn't figure out if this, if this um, uh, uh, figure are going out or coming in, because it could be coming in. Depends how you how you look at it. I don't know. Every time I look at my painting, uh, there is always some history and stories. Um, for instance, uh, uh, I do a lot of uh, a heritage home in Westminster too, a, a painting. And uh, like old old building like this, and uh, old uh, street scene like this. This young retiree is also active in the art community. She's on the board of directors of the FCA. She instructs courses for them on occasion and juries art exhibitions. She also teaches private art classes to small groups. And it's impressive to note that Angela was actively involved in spearheading an artistic collaboration done to support the Canadian Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. 65 artists painted a single red rose, which was then combined into one large composite piece of art. Other artists included Robert Bateman, Alan Wiley, and Robert Ginn. The painting is on display in the lobby of the BC Children's Hospital. Angela Ahempel artwork is featured at several locations in and around Vancouver, including the Van Dopp Gallery in New Westminster. When I'm 90, I'm just going to be painting too, because, you know, I just no way for me to stop. It's no way. Angela has discovered the secret of happy retirement. For artistic expression is an important form of psychological development. We can create art pretty much anywhere, from the privacy of our own home to attending an art class. Art is a healthy way of expressing ourselves visually when sometimes there are no words to express ourselves verbally. And you can see why it's also a great way to alleviate stress. Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media, celebrating seniors in our community. This is a tale about a woman who has a passion for words. Mary Gavin grew up in the Celtic countryside, became a palliative care nurse, but never lost her zeal for storytelling. When she moved to Canada, she brought her heritage of storytelling with her. Now retired, Mary has taken her passion and created a new career for herself. Today you can find this Celtic storyteller sharing her yarns in local pubs, public venues, schools, and creative workshops. Mary was past president of the National Storytellers of Canada and is currently the treasurer of the Vancouver Storytellers. She hosts numerous workshops as part of her profession. We have events like this where a group of storytellers get together for the professional development and tell. So this is, this is a fall event. We also have an epic in the spring, that is we tell a story starting Friday evening, all Friday evening, all day Saturday, Saturday evening, Sunday. So we can really take a long story and relish the culture from which it comes. And the board said, my goodness me, we have to be seen to be doing something. So they sacked one manager and suspended another. Taking her experiences, Mary has woven together a wonderful career of storytelling in her retirement. And she's quite good at it, as you can see from her 2011 Storytelling Award for her CD of Celtic Otherworld Stories. And talk about a twist. Mary has recently trained as a yoga teacher and is practicing storytelling yoga, where instead of just breathing and holding poses, students will get to listen to three or four lines of a story with each pose. The benefit to this type of workout is that it uses both the right and left sides of your brain while getting the benefits of stretching exercises. So storytelling yoga is for people who like to move a little, laugh a lot and hear a quirky story by me. 
Mary's dream doesn't end here. She's thinking about taking her one-woman storytelling show on the road. Tail spinners like Mary Gavin gather at various locations throughout the province to share their art form. Kira Van Dusen has traveled the world and shares her wonderful experience by word of mouth and in her books. It was a wonderful experience for me because I started to discover ways in which people are similar throughout the world and ways that we are different just in terms of our backgrounds and what we've been through and how we've grown up and the kinds of ways that we've lived. So I've brought those stories back. Stories tap in our imagination. They enchant, delight, teach, inspire, and motivate. Storyteller Tony Rainbow sums it up beautifully. I'm doing something I like doing, and uh, in, in a way, I suppose if I could live my life again, I might go back to my 20s and start off as a storyteller. All of these retired professionals have found a wonderful venue in which to express themselves. Their appetite for stories is a reflection of what moves them and inspires them, while at the same time, reaching out and emotionally connecting to others. An ideal vocation during their retirement years, you might say. Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media celebrating seniors in our community. Ann Newman is a retired nurse, and her husband, Alan, worked in corrections before he pensioned off. But this couple is far from retired. You could say they have a picture-perfect business in their golden years. They share a hobby they're passionate about, which allows them to make money, travel, and spend time with friends. The Newmans produce postcards, greeting cards, souvenir fridge magnets, perpetual calendars, recipe cards, and bookmarks, and the list just goes on. The products carry a variety of messages, and they incorporate scenery from Vancouver Island, Salt Spring Island, and Quadra Island. And their business is appropriately named Anne's Island Photography. Anne identified a need for fun local postcards that showcase the beauty of the beaches and local scenery for small touristy communities. Their products are so popular that shops can hardly keep these things in stock. The entire venture began by accident over 26 years ago, with Anne, a closet photographer, and almost three decades later it developed into a little gold mine for the Newmans. Well, it's a funny story actually. My, our daughter um, and I went camping to Salt Spring Island. I love the island. I said, let's go into Ganges and get some postcards of, of this little area. I want to send them home. Went in, no postcards. Absolutely nothing of Salt Spring Island. I spoke to the lady. She said, no, nobody's interested in us. So I said, well, would you like me to take some photos and put them on a card with an envelope? Because I'm sure they would sell. Oh, yes, please. So anyway, that's what I did. Sent them over and they were ordering, what, 20 at a time or something? Oh, oh <laughs> All of that. And anyway, they, they really liked them. So when I went over next time, they said, could you do postcards for us? So I looked into the postcard business and they said, yes, we can do them. 40,000 we would have to do, um, uh, f what is it, 5,000 of eight scenes. And Alan said, there's no way. And I said, oh, no, we can't do that. Absolutely impossible. Well, to cut a very long story short, we found somebody that would do a very short run for us. We didn't think it was short at the time. It was 6,000 postcards, 1,000 of each of six scenes. So uh, anyway, he promised them for us by May. And when was it? September, the just, before, just Labor before Labor Day weekend. So Alan was saying, there you are, your money's tied up on the shelf all winter and we've got to pay for this order. Well, in the end, I said, I'm just getting on the next ferry tomorrow before Labor Day weekend. I'm going to go over with my 6,000 postcards. And I did, and I sold 3,800 in one afternoon. Meanwhile, what did Mr. Newman do? Breathed a sigh of relief because at least we recouped our investment. 
The business changed after Alan retired, and luckily for Anne, it was perfect timing, since her baby continued to grow along with demand. And in Alan Newman's business, like most tourism-related ventures on Vancouver Island, is mainly seasonal. Each summer, they stock up and set out in their camper with all their products. Then they travel up and down, across and back the island, camping at various sites while they take photographs, restock and distribute their products in shops. Their business allows them to spend time together, visiting lots of different people and places, and spend time camping in comfort throughout Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. So when he retired, we decided to buy a trailer. We decided to slow down, too. And slow down. <laughs> the couple converted the basement of their house into their business workshop. They have an assistant who helps make the products in-house to save costs. This allows Anne and Alan to continually come up with fresh and new ideas to add to their product line. At first, we only started doing these, just postcards and these. We've done a tremendous amount for Bouchard Gardens. And the latest is this, and we just cannot keep up with the demand for these kind of things. They're called sand cards. They're typically beach scenes with props and words written in sand. These senior entrepreneurs have no intention of retiring from business anytime soon. They found a passionate hobby that they love, which allows them to travel, make money, and enjoy their time together in a never-ending adventure throughout the islands. And then, then we have a day off before we go home. A day Which off? A day off. What's that? So <laughs> Do you have a great story idea about seniors living life to the fullest? Senior Living would love to hear from you. Your inspiring story idea could be featured in an upcoming episode on Senior Living on Location or in our monthly BC-wide Senior Living Lifestyle magazine. To send us your idea, visit our website at seniorlivingmag.com and follow the links to our Contact Us page or simply email us at production at seniorlivingmag.com.